What's up, everybody? It's your boy Ida Hoagie from Nerd Enthusiast Poker Podcast. Today, I'm doing a little independent movie review here. Intacto. Intacto. Uh, we're going to talk about this for a couple minutes. And I'm going to bring up a couple weird things about this movie, so stay tuned about this. First, make sure you subscribe to all our Nerd Enthusiast Poker Podcast uh, places on uh, Spotify, Apple, etc., etc., uh, so if you don't know, I'm a huge, um, I don't really want to say like gambling, casino, poker, movie buff. I love watching all these movies and I always look for these obscure ones that I haven't seen yet. I look, I dig around, look for reviews and things. And this one popped up on my radar recently, which I was surprised I'd never even heard of. Cause usually I've heard of some of them and I'm like, I just haven't got around to watching it. But this one I have not even heard of. It's a Spanish slash English speaking, uh, movie intacto means intact in English and so I originally when I saw this pop up, it was popping up on a couple of blogs that I had found saying like this is definitely worth checking out. This was done in uh, 2001 and this came out a year after the movie Unbreakable by M. Night Shyamalan. I'll bring that up in a minute why uh, I feel like it's somewhat related to that kind of storyline um, even though it's two different people. So at first I'm going to read you the little thing that happens here and uh, the little thing that happens here. Uh, yeah, the... <laughs> It's early. I just woke up. It's been a, it was a long poker session last night. Considered lucky after surviving a plane crash, a bank thief is recruited into an underground gambling ring where death and luck intermingle. This critically acclaimed thriller ventures into the world of the those blessed with fortune and the gamblers who bet high stakes just to feel the rush of fate's hand. Who will chance smile on this time? Who will have the odds in their favor? Max von Sydow from The Exorcist and Minority Report stars as the ringleader who has the power to steal other people's luck and will stop at nothing to do it. Jam-packed with twists and turns, Intacto will leave you guessing till the very end. Now, when I first saw this, I saw that it was um, a Spanish uh, film with English subtitles. And uh, I, I don't mind that. I mean, you know, I've watched a bunch of Chinese gambling films uh, where, you know, it's English subtitles. I don't mind that. You just got to remember if you're watching that, like, you got to keep the phone down. You're going to actually have to read and pay attention. Uh, but this one, I was surprised. There was actually only a little bit of that. It was mostly English. Uh, most of the film is English. It's not dubbed over. It's not like, you know, mouthed over. It's straight English. Now, there are some scenes that are in Spanish, but uh, it's a mix of both. So break it down real quick. And I got the trailer I'm going to play behind you in a little bit here, too. Uh, this film is basically in a world where people have luck, but it's more of like a power, right? Like certain people have really good luck and certain people have, I guess, the power of what you want to call a jinx. Uh, so the people that have good luck, there's different variations of these people that have good luck. Uh, they just naturally run good. But there's also these people that can steal other people's luck power from them, basically. They don't make it seem like it's like a superhero power, but it is basically a knowledge that they have these abilities. I guess you would say abilities is a better word than power. It's not like a superhero movie. So basically, your main character, Frederico, I believe we call him in the film. Uh, he goes up against, and uh, this is the film. His name is the Jew. That's what they call him in the film. He's like the main superpower uh, luck guy. He has like the uh, ability to have super luck okay he ends up stealing Federico's power now spoilers going forward okay so if you want to watch this stop here come back and tell me if you agree with my review and breakdown but basically he wants to steal his uh he steals his powers now you can steal someone's powers by basically touching them or hugging them or having like a touch of their hand now these guys are hired basically it doesn't really make too much breakdown in the backstory, but they're either hired or they own uh, like casinos. And basically what they do is like when someone's going on a heater, like someone's really hot and they're hitting like every number, someone that comes in this uh, place uh, that they feel like has luck, they go up to them and like they'll send in these coolers and they'll go basically go steal their luck. Like they'll go touch them or grab them. So they run out of luck. So there's this whole underground network of these like high stakes uh, gamblers that basically bet on these people that have these abilities, like who has more luck than who, and they can steal people's power and kind of get stronger in their own, uh, you know, their own right, and it goes that way. So lo and behold, Frederico has lost his powers, and I basically guess that the way it breaks down, it's a little confusing. 
Uh, he, I guess, looks for people that have luck, and he basically wants to get them strong enough to go back up against the Jew and take his powers. So Furry goes out there looking for people, and boom, there's a plane crash where literally everybody dies except one dude. One dude survives his plane crash. Now, this is what kind of brought me back to Unbreakable. Uh, if you've seen the M. Night Shyamalan film, um, Bruce Willis is like the lone survivor of a train uh, crash. Kind of felt like that. Kind of had that kind of feel. And this movie came out a year after Unbreakable. I don't know if it inspired this film a little bit that way or not. I'm not sure. But it kind of felt very similar and it was only a year difference uh, from when it came out. So Frederico finds this guy, survives his plane crash, finds him in the hospital. Now, Frederico works for some kind of insurance adjusters or whatever. So basically, he goes and finds this guy. He's in the hospital, but he's under lockdown by the police. Now, the reason he's under lockdown is that they find out, even though he's the main survivor of this plane crash, his name is all over the news. Well, they find out he's actually won it for, like, bank robberies. And uh, so he's under, basically, arrest in the hospital until he can recover, and then he's going to go. So Frederico shows up at the hospital. like, hey, I'm an insurance adjuster for the airline. Um, I have this $25 million check for you if you sign here and just say, like, we're not responsible through the uh, uh, the plane for being, you know, et cetera, whatever, some kind of corporate BS. So he goes, listen, sign this. And he's like, I want to make you a deal. I'm going to help you escape out of here as well. So the dude's like, all right, cool. So he signs off on it. Frederico comes back. They escape out of the hospital, which is like very, I guess he drugs the guards, but they didn't really explain that too much. They get out of there. And then he kind of uh, starts testing this guy's luck, right? He, he wants to see how good, how much power of luck this guy has that he's training or whatnot. So he takes some of these, like, underground games. Uh, kind of felt like almost like a little squid game verse, you know? Like, high-stakes gamblers betting on these people. Takes some of these weird games, right? It's not like your casino games and things like that. It's these weird games. And the one that sticks out the most is, like, actually the cover of, like, some of the images I saw where there's a prey mantis on his head, and they bet whose head the prey mantis is going to land on. It's so weird. But what you find out at this point, too, is that they, you can also steal people's powers by taking Polaroids of them, which is, like, so random. So, basically, they bet. So, like, if you take someone's picture with a Polaroid, you can actually steal their power and hold on to it with that picture until that picture is destroyed. So, these people bet, like, almost like poker chips, but they bet to, like, collect these pictures. And they, like, the Jew, who's the main guy, has, like, the most pictures out of everybody. He's collected, like, so many over the years. And so, anyway, it goes along there. I'm going to show you the trail in the background, get you a little more of a feel here. And I'll kind of explain what I'm seeing here. All right. And some of the things I've already talked about, but you'll kind of see what I'm kind of talking about. This is one of the challenges where they had people blindfolded running through the forest as far as fast as possible. That's the Jew right there. That's the main guy. And the people that crash into the uh, trees, like, die or get hurt really bad, they're out of the game. So, like, kind of squid game worse. They all use these black bands. They play Russian roulette is one of the big things the Jew likes to bet on. Uh, the Polaroids is a big thing. And so, basically, this guy has to run through traffic blindfolded. This was a weird shot that I never understood in the film. They just showed the Jew standing in the middle of, like, the desert. Uh, but, yeah, it, it, it's definitely weird. It's definitely kind of strange the way they go. It, it's It's got that squid game kind of feel to it as well. There's the Polaroids I was talking about as well that they like to collect. Uh, but it, I, I'll tell you what, I was actually entertained by the film. I, I actually enjoyed it. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, but once it started clicking together... It felt like a rugged puzzle that I put together, which made sense, but it wasn't, like, perfect. Uh, there's still kind of some rough edges, I guess you would say, when I was watching it. But I liked it. Overall, I liked it. Um, had some action. Some of it didn't make sense. But the storyline was fun. I guess original for what uh, I was expecting. Uh, wasn't really sure what to expect really going into it. I don't really look... When it's something new like this, when it's a new gambling movie, I try not to dig too deep into it. I want to kind of just kind of get it a feel for myself. I watched like one or two trailers, and that was pretty much it like this, and then went from it. 
Uh, so anyway, Intacto, I could not find this on like Amazon Prime. I think one streaming service I found, which I didn't have. So I ended up just buying the DVD off eBay for like four bucks and put it in my PS5 and watched it that way. But um, yeah, I would say I would recommend if you're if you're into gambling, casino, poker films like me, if you like that kind of genre, then um, I would I would recommend it. I would check it out if I were you. So I'm Ida Hoagie, and that's my uh, breakdown on some rare films that uh, I found. And uh, let me know what you think. Drop your comment below. See ya.